This is AM Agenda. Hello and welcome to the program. This morning we look ahead to Kevin Rudd's speech on the economy at the National Press Club. Mr Rudd had challenged the opposition leader Tony Abbott to a debate on the economy, but Mr Abbott said no, suggesting Kevin Rudd tell us when the election will be and then he's more than happy to have a number of debates throughout the election campaign. Coming up a bit later on the program, Labor MP Nick Champion, Liberal MP Kelly O'Dwyer. First though, live to our Sydney studio and the Shadow Treasurer Joe Hockey. Mr Hockey, thanks for your time. Why did Tony Abbott not just say yes and show up today? Well, because the Labor Party promised an election. Uh, Kevin Rudd has effectively disowned that promise. And now he's in for a stunt a day. And I'd say to Mr Rudd, uh, stop the stunts, start giving us solutions. And the fact that he comes out with a stunt a day and failing to deliver even a solution a week it just shows that Mr Rudd's a fake. He's a fake and he has no plan for the future, whereas we've outlined uh, uh, a number of policies. In fact, we've given a whole lot of detail on policies from industrial relations to broadband, deregulation and, and Tony Abbott and I have a plan for the economy uh, that involves improving productivity, reducing the size of government, uh, focusing on getting rid of the taxes like the carbon tax and the mining tax and proper economic engagement in our region. In this speech today, Mr Rudd will say the core fact is this, Australia is seen around the world as one of the strongest economies, most stable of societies in a nation underpinned by a robust national security. Do you, do you accept that as a starting point, that we are and have one of the strongest economies in the world? Well, Kevin Rudd is dripping in hypocrisy. I mean, today he's going to say uh, that Tony Abbott is negative and Kevin Rudd is criticising Tony Abbott. Uh, does anyone else see this dripping hypocrisy in Kevin Rudd's words about negativity? Uh, but do the you fact accept that the fundamentals of the economy? He continues going on about, about negativity from the coalition, but he's the one that's criticising us. I'd say to you, uh, Australia is only in a reasonable economic position because of what the coalition did previously. Now, Kevin Rudd was responsible uh, for the biggest deficits in Australian history uh, and he borrowed a hundred million dollars a day to do it. He was responsible for the most wasteful programs in Australian history including 16 billion dollars on school halls, 31 of which are still being built today by the way, for five Mr. years Hockey, later. The government and, Labor's and, been in office for six years. When well, do they that, start that, getting some of the credit? Stopped. It hasn't stopped Kieran. The, 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 the great illustration of that the most wasteful program in Australian history has been over ten and a half billion dollars wasted on border protection uh, when you have 46,000 people come by boat to Australia because Kevin Rudd decided to change the laws and he has no solution to that. So but you accept the fundamentals of the economy are strong, don't you? And at six years on of a Labor government, when do they get some of the credit for that? Well, I don't give them any credit for the fact that the fundamentals of the Australian economy uh, continue to hold up because they've done everything they can to undermine it. Now, Mr Rudd today needs to come up with a plan on industrial relations. He needs to come up with a plan on infrastructure. He needs to come up with a plan to reduce red tape. All the things we've been doing. Uh, he needs to come up with a plan that is going to get rid of some of those taxes, like the carbon tax and the mining tax. Uh, he needs to actually come up with a plan to get the budget back to surplus. Now, this is going to be a rude shock to Kevin Rudd, but he said it was a temporary deficit. Five years later, Labor is still rolling out deficits, $300 billion of debt, and Mr Rudd actually has to explain where he's going to make cuts, cuts to government expenditure to pay for the promises that he's insinuating to the electorate and he's backgrounding to the electorate, but he's not actually providing any details on. You, you've said the uncertainty around the election uh, is now, now having a profound negative impact on the Australian economy. But we know it's going to be held in the next few months. The, the Australian co uh, Constitution says it must be. So does it really matter either way if it's a couple of weeks here or there? Well, of course it does. It, it affects people's planning. It affects business planning. But, but what's happened, Kieran, is... Kevin Rudd has made lots of announcements but actually said nothing. And it's the same old Kevin Rudd. It's the same old person. He's, he's actually said nothing. Uh, he comes up with a stunt a day and that creates uncertainty for business and it creates uncertainty for consumers. 
And what Australians are crying out for is stability and predictability and honesty and integrity. And what we've seen from Mr Rudd in the last two weeks, let alone his behaviour over the last few years, is that he's not someone that can be believed. He's not someone isn't it, that has fared income with the Australian Isn't it community. a bit much, though, to suggest that the... Well, yesterday Mr Abbott said the housing industry had pretty much stalled all year because of the uncertainty around the election date. Isn't it, well, For much of the year we had certainty on the election date and yet he's saying that the housing industry has stalled as a result of the last couple of weeks. Well, is, is that it, it has been it? the uncertainty about the Labor Party and the uncertainty in Canberra. And Kevin Rudd has contributed to that all year. I mean, let's be fair dinkum. He, he wants everyone uh, to believe that he has been a loyal, hard-working member of the Labor caucus. I mean, come on, Kieran. You, you, you and everyone else are smarter than that. And now he's pleading with everyone to be polite to each other after he has destabilised the Labor Party in government for the last three years. I mean, surely we're going to see this... Everyone is going to see this hypocrisy uh, for what it is. I mean, it, it, so today is a real test for Kevin Rudd. Today is the test uh, for him to actually deliver all the policies that he's been promising. He said he'd get rid of the carbon tax and introduce an emissions trading scheme. Uh, he said he wants a fairer society. Well, let's have a program for industrial relations change that is actually going to strengthen the Australian economy. Uh, let's have a plan uh, that improves productivity, that focuses on welfare to work, that focuses okay. on building infrastructure where there is a cost-benefit analysis. Let's not have policy on the run like the NBN, which he did on the back of an envelope on the VIP travelling overseas, or, or let's not have a, a thought bubble like yesterday on Indigenous affairs where he engaged in some of the most repulsive behaviour uh, on, on, on a single day by a Prime Minister and the way he treated a disabled person and then the way he just made up policy on the run in relation to Indigenous affairs. I want to, get, I want to ask you about that in just a moment, mm -hmm. but first of all, on the, on the Holden uh, claims today, uh, suggestions in the Australian newspaper that Holden wants an additional $265 million on top of the $275 million already providing, uh, provided by the Commonwealth and states in terms of subsidies to that automotive manufacturer. Uh, Kim Carr said yesterday, we will be able to ensure the future prosperity of the automotive industry. Can the Coalition say the same thing? Uh, well, firstly, Holden haven't approached us with that figure. We haven't seen any information on that. Uh, secondly, uh, there comes a point where you need to say enough is enough and the fact that there is already a massive amount of money being provided uh, to the automotive industry, unless there is a, a very compelling case put forward by Holden, uh, then you'd need to think twice about throwing more money uh, at, at a manufacturer, a single manufacturer when so many others in the manufacturing industry are doing it tough. Now, I just say to you, Kieran, uh, we're always prepared to discuss these matters uh, with individual manufacturers, uh, but the history of Labor is they promise money uh, and then they break it. Kevin Rudd promised cash for clunkers. Uh, uh, he's promised uh, that, uh, or Labor promised that Holden would be around to 2022. And mm. they threw money at Ford and Ford's closing. Uh, and Mitsubishi closed on Mr Rudd's watch. I, I think... Well, it sounds like the government's willing to uh, provide this, though, well, according to what Kim Carr The Labor Party's never seen a, a, a subsidy it didn't like, but ultimately taxpayers have to find the money. And that's why Labor and Kevin Rudd are leaving us with over $300 billion of debt. And the biggest okay. deficit, in the case of Kevin Rudd, the biggest deficit in Australian history. On Indigenous recognition in, in the Constitution, Mr Rudd, yesterday... Uh, at uh, Yurikala in, in uh, East Arnhem Land, committed to a referendum on constitutional recognition within two years. Politics to one side, do you think that that is a good move? Politics to one side, Kieran. We've offered bipartisan support the entire way. And it was the Liberal Party in 2007 that committed to a referendum to recognise Indigenous Australians in the Constitution. So it's been our party's policy since 2007. And Tony Abbott, in a speech in March of this year, said that within the first 12 months of a coalition government, uh, we would uh, provide to the community, seeking bipartisan and community support, the words for a referendum uh, that would recognise in the Constitution Indigenous Australians. Now, 
Tony Abbott has been not only bipartisan, he has sought to accelerate the timetable in relation to this. And Kevin Rudd yesterday, in the process that we're going to be very familiar with, on the run, without consulting anyone, uh, came up with the idea that it was going to happen within two years. Uh, and a few media outlets bought it, but it was policy on the run. He didn't consult with anyone. He was rewriting his speech on the spot. And I mean, fair dinkum, he tried to create division on the matter of Indigenous affairs. And Tony Abbott's record on Indigenous affairs is unparalleled when it comes to political leaders in Australia. You, you obviously don't think it's a new Kevin Rudd, your mate? No. He's the same old Kevin Rudd, the same... Okay. He's, he's, he's laying it on, you know, the, with a trowel. And some people are buying it, but seriously, have a good look at what's happening. Absolutely nothing. Lots of wheels are spinning, lots of cosmetics, lots of fake. But the reality is that it's still the same old Labor. Mr Hockey, appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Karen. Thank you. A quick break, and when we return, Kelly O'Dwyer and Nick Champion.